Well, let's compare the two depreciation methods that we know. So let's say we've got a vehicle with the following details. There's a cost of 32000 estimated useful life of four years, and an estimated residual value of 12800 So the firm's debating whether to use straight line, depreciation, or reducing balance at a rate of 20%. So let's have a look at the straight line method. It's much easier. All we've got to do is one calculation. We take our cost, less residual, divided by useful life, and if we do that, we'll get 32000 that's 12,800 divided by 4. We're going to depreciate $4,800 every year. So in year 1, we charge $4,800 of depreciation. We've accumulated the same amount. That leaves a carrying value of 27,200. Year 2, we charge the exact same amount of depreciation. Year 3, the same. Year 4, the same. And we will end up with a carrying value here of $12,800. So let's go and look at the reducing balance method though. So reducing balance, if we're going to depreciate it at 20%, we can actually ignore this info here. We don't need it. Sometimes the question will give it to us, but we don't actually need it because all we need is the reducing balance percentage times by the carrying value. So in year one, the carrying value is the original cost of 32,000 times that by 20%. That's depreciation of 6,400 means we've accumulated the same amount and our carrying value will be 32,000 less the accumulated depreciation which is 25,600. So in year two that's the amount we're going to use and we're going to put that this new carrying value here goes forward into our new calculation. So now we're doing 20% times 25,600 is 5120. Our depreciation accumulated depreciation will go up and that'll make our carrying value go down. Year three, we're carrying forward the new carrying value of 20,400, uh, 480, sorry, times 20% is 4,096. That'll increase the accumulated depreciation and that'll decrease the carrying value. Finally, in year four, we're gonna get 20% times 16,384. That'll make our depreciation accumulated go up and our carrying value go down. And we're gonna end up with a carrying value of 13,000 107. So let's have a look at those two methods side by side now. So straight line and reducing balance both started with the same cost at the beginning. In year one, there was $4,800 of depreciation with straight line, but with reducing balance, we did 32,000 times 20% was 6,400. The carrying value using straight line was 27,200. So we got that by taking our cost here and minusing away our accumulated depreciation and that means our carrying value is 27,200. Uh, whereas down here for reducing balance the carrying value is 25,600. So that's going to make a difference in year two. Straight line depreciation we will still charge 4,800 but reducing balance we're actually going to charge 5,120 because we're taking the new carrying value here and what we did was we times that by 20% and that gave us 5,120. So the carrying value now for straight line ends up at 22,400. Reducing balance, we're down to 20,480. Year three, straight line was the same. Year four, reducing balance decreased quite a bit, down to 4,096. Left our carrying value with straight line at 17,600. Reducing balance carrying value, 16,384. And then lastly, we charge another 4,800 in year four in straight line and finished uh, with a 3,277 with reducing balance. And that actually look, left us with a carrying value of 12,800 for straight line, but uh, reducing balance was 13,107. So let's have a look at uh, comparing those two and look at year one. 4,800 was charged for depreciation with straight line, 6,400 for reducing balance. Year two, straight line obviously stayed the same, but reducing balance decreased. It's still more than the straight line. Year three, what we see for the first time is that the straight line amount is actually more than the reducing balance amount. Then in year four, it's actually significantly bigger than the reducing balance amount. Total them up and they actually ended up almost the same, well pretty close anyway. So we've charged a total of 19,200 of depreciation with straight line and 18,893 with reducing balance. So looking at that on a graph, we can look at the depreciation every year. Straight line was the same. 
Reducing balance was more at the beginning, 6,400, and then eventually it went down to 3,277. So what does this tell us? It tells us that a reducing balance method will charge more in its early life, more depreciation in the asset's early life, and less over time. And we'll probably end up with a situation where at the end, straight line will end up charging significantly more than the same reducing balance method. Looking at the accumulated depreciation for straight line, it just went up incrementally every year by the same amount. But for reducing balance, we can see after the first year, it had charged a little more depreciation than straight line. After the second year, it had charged more. And then the third year, it's getting less, but it's still more until eventually it more or less ended up at the same spot. I guess what we're saying is different though is they, they get there different ways. Reducing balance charge more at the beginning and less at the end, whereas straight line was just consistent the whole time. Looking at the carrying value it tells the same story. It went down incrementally with straight line, but with reducing balance, it's decreased more at the beginning, but finished at roughly the same. And then we guess we want to go now, we'll, we'll ask the question, which method should we be using? So what we're going to say is go back to our theory, reporting period, pick the method that best matches the amount of depreciation the revenues uh, been used for with the amount of revenue that it's generated. Let's look at relevance, pick the method that will help you calculate the most accurate profit so good decisions can be made. And that'll be the method that best matches the revenue earned with the expense incurred in using the non-current asset. So long story short, all we want to do is get down to this very important term, the assets revenue generating uh, capacity or pattern. And what that means is if I have an asset that's going to generate pretty much the same revenue every period, I'll use straight line depreciation. So we can see examples would be the shop fittings, the display equipment, furniture, and so on. If I've got assets that will earn more revenue in their early years and less in their later years, I'm going to use reducing balance depreciation because that method's going to better match revenues with expenses. So take uh, the coat hanger or the shop fittings there. It's going to generate roughly the same amount of revenue. Let's say it's $10,000 each year. Well, we should charge the exact same amount of depreciation every year. It doesn't get any less efficient as it gets older. But with, um, if I've got a, a certain asset that's going to generate more revenue in its early life, so take a car, it's going to generate 25000 in year one, well, we might charge $10,000 depreciation in year two, it might generate only 17500 so it doesn't make sense to charge the same amount of depreciation, so I'm going to charge less, I'll charge $7,000. And then finally in year three, it's only going to generate $10,000 of revenue, so I'm going to reduce my depreciation to $5,000 accordingly. So that's a good example of how the two methods differ, and you pick it based on the revenue generating capacity of the asset which you're depreciating. In the real world, what's done? Well, we can see a range of methods. So for JB Hi-Fi, they're going to use the straight line method for their buildings, so plant, um, so for plant equipment and so on. We've got catapult, so they make fort lifts and so on. So they're going to use the reducing balance method. They think that uh, something like a fort lift gets less efficient as it gets older, so that makes sense. Quanters, so straight line basis for property, plant and equipment. Uh, Medical Australia, they uh, use diminishing value, which is what we call reducing balance. Um, so you can see they've used it there for lab equipment and a motor vehicle and so on. Um, so different businesses have applied different methods, but in each case they've based it on the revenue generating capacity of the asset.